it's critical to preserve the macaw and to take all the action possible because our population is at a point of almost collapse. We had basically anticipated that we were losing like eight macaws every year. What we learned was that the numbers that we were losing were from 25 to 50 pirates every year. The challenges for the macaws, of course, are poaching. So we have to take action now, otherwise the species will be extinct before we know it. This is my tiny piece of jungle. I am Isabel, I am a wildlife veterinarian and the director of the Billy's Wildlife and Referral Clinic. We are inside the rehab cage and it will allow animals to practice uh, wildlife on a smaller scale and prepare for release and return to the wild. The challenges for the macaws, of course, are poaching and trespassers that enter the protected area and rob chicks. And what is happening with our scarlet macaws is that we have really old birds and the young birds are being poached. And what will happen if we don't intervene now is that in a few years, those old birds are going to stop breeding and then that population is going to collapse over the course of very few years. So yes, poaching is probably the biggest threat to the species. We've had several incidents now where FCD was able to capture poachers with live chicks on them. The research team as well as the rangers are the boots on the ground that actually protect these chicks. My name is Rafael Manzanero, Executive Director for Friends for Conservation and Development. So the work really entails multiple things. The main thing here is to conduct the monitoring of the nesting sites where the macaws are breeding annually. So this is the Cuomo tree. This is where the macaws, they nest, will be setting up the line. So our staff will remain here for seven months on location to be able to have a presence. Two chicks. Chicks are big, healthy. Cavity is clean, dry, it's a nice view. <laughs> the presence really helps them really to prevent any kind of the illegal extraction in the area. Another component to it is of course the lab where we do the in situ conservation program. That's the laboratory over here. We have some chicks that were vulnerable to poaching. They had to be extracted out from the field from those remote area. In that case, they are raised in that location for a soft release program. If we didn't bring these chicks here, they would be poached, taken to the pet trade. If they're injured and they don't naturally heal, they would eventually die as well. Apart from that, we have a law enforcement component to it, which relates really more to the development and the implementation of an anti-poaching program. This is the exact trail where three poachers have already exited heading west. And on the images picked up by the cameras, uh, we can see that they're carrying uh, chicks, macaws. So uh, if we were to meet uh, any people on the way, you stick with me and him. 
that takes place for a period of at least six to eight weeks. At that time, it is really at a high level when poachers are really coming after the chicks. But if you reach a camp and you find this, they're carrying macaws because they use this to feed them. So, and this is relatively still fresh. Well, yeah, definitely the poachers, the same ones on the images. But the way we're going right now, we don't know if we will meet someone coming in. And that's the effort that is trying really to intercept and to seize and prosecute the people who are after these chicks. We have a population number that's about 330 some individuals, which is too small to begin with. And we know that we are losing a lot of the young ones to poaching. So we have to take action now, otherwise the species will be extinct before we know it. Given the stakes today, given what we know, and then given the losses, that we are having annually, we do know that that population is pretty much going to disappear unless we can adapt into new strategies. It's amazing to see the effort coming together uh, that it takes for one of these animals from the rangers, uh, whether police is needed, the forest department, the biologists, the donors, the volunteers, the countless hours and dollars it takes to restore one of these animals and everything comes together to see it fly free again. Nobody can do it on their own and without the town coming together it could never be done. The main aim of this program is one single goal. That goal is to increase the population to a viable population of scarlet macaws in Belize.